Uh, yeah, so um, thanks ever so much for giving me the chance to uh, speak tonight. It was... Um, uh, Carla came up with the idea because of my background, so I thought I'd, I'd tell you exactly why uh, Carla thought it would be a, a good idea for me to talk and uh, probably you'll understand why it probably wasn't a good idea for me to talk. So who am I? Uh, give you a bit of background as to who I am and what I do. Um, I'm from Shrewsbury, Shropshire, which is uh, very difficult to say when you're drunk. Um, but it is also um, the most beautiful place on the planet. And for some reason in 1990, I decided to give all that up and moved to Gothenburg. Um, in 1991, I gave Gothenburg up and moved back. Um, but I, I did fall in love with England, uh, in, with Sweden. And then I decided I would go and study. So I went and studied Swedish at university in England. And after graduating, I got my first proper job, which was translating technical uh, maintenance manuals for the Gripen uh, and it is exactly as exciting as it sounds um, which is not very um, and the next so then with my next um, my my first job in Sweden uh, sorry just my speaking that I don't know if any of you um, are familiar with Exkasoft? Has anyone used Exkasoft in the past? Yep. Yep. There's a few people. I, I, I can't see your reaction. So, yeah. Uh, so my first job was um, in Shista working for um, Exkasoft doing their technical documentation, the user manuals. I then, um, between 2000 and 2017, uh, I worked for a company called Hawk, do um, financial technology, which is uh, share trading, which I know very little about. Um, I then worked for Etaplan uh, as a consultant for about five years and actually ended up back at Saab working on the Gripen. Um, then I delved into the world of gaming as they call it it's actually gambling but gaming sounds a lot more wholesome so everyone says gaming and then i also spent i think six months at Hamcon, which was my my final my final act as a, an employee because in 2017 rachel who's who i've actually just thrown out while i'm doing my <laughs> talk uh Rachel and I decided to start uh, a company and the re main reason we did it was because I, at the time I was also, um, st I started um, performing stand-up comedy and I was actually getting okay enough to get paid so we thought well if we have an RV, uh, you know, a limited company then we can put that through there as well. So the grand plan was to actually reduce my the amount of technical writing I was doing and increase the amount of comedy um, which is, is, is a strange choice um, but unfortunately technical writing proved to be very very difficult to quit I went to we went to Atlas Copco and both of us worked there for a while working with the uh, with the information management team I spent a bit of time at Instanto a fintech company um, we both worked actually at Brighter, working, helping them with their, uh, again, user manuals for a diabetes app and device. Uh, Top Golf, which is a company who do um, ball tracking uh, software. So when you go to a driving range and you hit the ball, you get to know exactly how far your ball's gone. So it's a entertainment uh, with golf, and I'm I'm currently at Izettle 
as the only tech, as far as I know, I'm the only tech writer at Isethor and there's about 800 people, which is quite a scary, a scary task. Um, as you can see, there's not really any, and going off the, the previous companies, there's been no um, red thread, if you can say that. No, there's been no theme to my jobs. Uh, it's often been in industries I have no clue about, but I actually find that to be a benefit when documenting, because if I can understand it, then anyone can. Uh, and then the hobby, yeah, as I said, I started uh, doing comedy in 2008 as a, um, I joined a, a newbie competition and uh, I got to the final but didn't win. Um, but it basically got me hooked on and I don't really know why I do it quite often. Uh, the high points, I would say, uh, performing at uh, Nora Brun was, was a big deal. I pre performed with I can't remember what his name is now. Um, he was per Percy Neela Gord in um, Neela City. Someone could probably answer me that. Big tall chap. Um, I also supported Al Pitcher on some of his uh, tour dates and got to perform in front of a thousand people, which was scary and very, very enjoyable. And then probably the low point was performing for about eight people in a pizzeria in Flen, um, especially after about halfway through my set, uh, two of the people walked out because they were actually only waiting for their pizza to be made. Um, so it's those sort of times that you do wonder why you, you do things like this. Um, but as I said, I became addicted to it and for whatever reason, um, I've continued with it. And that's pretty much all on hold now, thanks to Corona. I was supposed, I was due to, I'd finally written my first ever one man show and it was supposed to be, have its premiere on Saturday, on Midsummer's Day in Canista, but that's not happening. Not that I'm bitter about it at all. Uh, I'd like to point out, if you do have, have any questions while I'm wittering on, do feel free to, um, to ask them at the time or you can wait until the end. Um, um, you won't get so much de in depth uh, like detail from me regarding this subject because uh, like I say, Carla threw it at me and I picked it up and, and ran with it. So the big question is, should we use humor in documentation? And I would say the answer to that is maybe. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit. Um, so what are the main benefits of humor? Or what can, what can we gain from, from, uh, from humor? Um, the, one of the main things with, with humor is that when it's used in conjunction with information, people are better able to remember the information um, compared if, if they don't perceive it as humorous. Um, this is called the, uh, the humor effect and it, it, it uh, impacts different parts of your brain, which is, I think there's one called the, the recognition memory and the recall memory. So you basically your ability to, to recognize what it is and then to be able to go into your brain and go and fetch it. So if you, if you see humor as some sort of, uh, like, um, metadata flag that you put on it. If you bung a bit of humor next to some information, it will be much easier for it to be retrieved. Um, uh, there's also other benefits, uh, going too far. Um, so there's an increase in uh, energy levels, um, in, in the reader that is, not of you while you're making it funny. There's actually a reduction in negative emotions. Um, there's an increase in interest and people will view you more positively. However, uh, that makes you think, oh, well, that's brilliant. We should make everything funny. Um, there, are some, there are some risks, of course. The biggest one and one that I'm fairly familiar with on a regular basis is causing offence. Obviously, 
um, humor is is a very personal and uh, very individual concept so one something that you find particularly humorous is um, maybe not the funniest thing for someone else and it could also cause offense which is obviously a bad thing it can uh, lead to misunderstanding for example if you use sarcastic references in your warning text that's not going to help any uh, person who's reading your manual and then trying to safely use whatever it is you're talking about and one of the big problems is it's harder to localize um, jokes are very very difficult in general to to translate at all and i think translating british humor into german or french is probably one of the hardest things ever to do i don't know if anyone else has i i once tried to translate someone's best man speech for them to make it in english and it was very 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 difficult indeed um yeah so when shouldn't you use it so really the the maybe answer is obviously i think it's fairly understandable that you don't use it everywhere i would say the main place you definitely definitely shouldn't use is troubleshooting because the worst thing you can possibly do is try to be um okay. funny with someone who's pissed off with you and they will be if they're troubleshooting your lousy piece of whatever it is that you've flogged to them legal text um mm -hmm. now I don't know anyone else of you who have to deal with compliance documentation. Um, as you'll probably know, uh, legal people, they don't really have that much sense of humor. So if you're writing anything that has any legal, legal uh, ramifications, definitely don't use humor. And I would say in general, technical documentation um, is probably not the best uh, venue for you to vent your creative humorous urges. Um, I mean, I would, when, when uh, Carla said to me, do you want to talk about using humor in uh, technical documentation? He, uh, he said technical, technical documentation, and then I didn't notice that he actually wrote in communication, which is actually quite a big difference um, so i would say when you should use it marketing text absolutely perfect if you if you want to throw in some humor there faqs again avoiding the bits where you're explaining why something isn't working but in general faqs can be on a more familiar and humorous uh, note and i as i said well you can use it everywhere but with caution um, now, I don't know if any, I'll, I can stop sharing that because that's the end of my actual slides right now. So I can actually see some faces. Um, yeah, so I, being a comedian and a technical writer, you would think that I would have probably tested the concept of using humor in technical writing, but I haven't. I haven't been brave enough um, as yet. I don't know, is, is anyone else ever attempted? I know that I remember when we talked about uh, with, with Kalle, we talked about it when we first spoke about this. And you, I seem to remember you saying that you'd used it at, uh, was it Marshall for the, for yes. the warning? Yeah. Uh, at that point, uh, we were uh, all those uh, warnings that you have to have when you have electrical equipment close to water or whatever. Uh, so d we uh, used since about Marshall loudspeakers. You, uh, we uh, we could, their their tone of voice was is really rock and roll. So we could do a lot of uh, death metal esque uh, yeah. images. Uh, to uh, to show how what you couldn't do uh, and what you uh, with the with the loudspeakers. I actually I actually tried to find because I remember you showing me them at the time. I because I thought oh that would be perfect. So I yeah. I, I, I 
as 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 appalling as my presentation is, it, there has actually gone quite a lot of research into it, and the amount of people who don't put humour into technical documentation is vast. The amount of people who have successfully done it is minuscule and untraceable by Google. I can say. Um, I think it's I think it's an interesting idea, and I. I like the idea of, I would like to be brave enough to use it, but unfortunately my, my sense of humour is so sort of twisted and strange that I, I'd be very, very wary of using my humour in, in anything official. But I don't know if anyone, any else of you have ever tried to, to use it. I have a comment there. I have not used it myself, but I remember it was a couple of years ago, uh, uh, I think it was Delta, the, the airline company. Yeah. They had the, the safety instructions uh, video. It, 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 and, and that was just full of, of uh, humor. Where, where, yeah. Yeah, where, where, where people were supposed to uh, sit down and uh, on the belt and, 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 and uh, yeah, they, they more jumped up and, and, and danced and I don't know, do you remember it? Yeah, I think I think I've seen I think I've seen a video of that, yeah. 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 And I think it's a really interesting, like I said, that it because if you do it, it, I mean you remember yourself the adverts that yeah. that stick with you often are uh, yeah. Yeah. humorous rather than yeah dramatic. Because it it, it as I say it really sticked out but uh, I don't think anyone else followed. I mean, they, it, it was it, and then it was more, more one stand. But I, 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 I think it's a really, really good way to, to um, if you dare. Because yeah. I, I assume uh, this film, this Delta film, was probably the most watched uh, safety film. For, for, for yeah. Films, yeah. I mean, I we we've we've toyed with as Isatha, we've toyed with the idea not not so much of having humour, but having a very very personal and uh, tone with with the users when we're trying to communicate. But it's really really difficult because you don't want us as flip flippant or annoying. No, really. No. I think Discord does it really well with their release notes uh, because they auto update the version. And yes. so every once in a while they just they just pop up on your screen and uh, you can tell that there's a technical writer there who has a lot of fun with it. Um, mm -hmm. But I tried, uh, like my talk in a few minutes is about being the lone technical writer. So me talking about having a team uh, right now might be confusing, but I have actually also worked in a team. Um, and I, I remember pitching it to, to that team at one point and we had a 20 person discussion about humor until our uh, the technical editor just went, came in with like a no fun sticker that she posted all over our Slack channels, which is like, no, we're not attempting that. Um, which I, I kind of get because I think it depends on, on your product um, mm. and what your users might be expecting. Like me as a Discord user, using it for communication with my friends and likely we're gamers. Um, and so I think that actually fits the, the, the communication platform pretty well, but for technical audiences and stuff where you might also have, uh, as you say, troubleshooting and so on, I'd be wary trying to attempt it. Yeah, I, I mean, I've, like, as I said, I, I'm supposedly a, a professional comedian at some sometimes, and uh, I've never ever dared to use it. I, I, I think the, the, the risk of getting fired of a, because of a bad joke is just too great then. Google actually does it really well in their, um, they have a course for teaching technical writing to developers. Um, so they have these two online courses like level one and level two and um, they, they're doing this like borderline snarky little thing where they're explaining the concept of technical active voice and then verbials, verbs and so on. And then in all of their examples, 
the sentences have to do with either QA, like the sentences have to do with QAing. So it's like this developer writes so and so many lines of code, but only four unit tests. That is bad uh, best practice, or like that's bad practice, and so on. And I find that like a, that quite funny, but also something that they're only really able to do because they're they're massive um, mm. and they can do it with a twinkle in their eye. Yeah, I think this, the size of your operation is uh, very important as well. And your relationship with your users. I, I can imagine Spotify probably getting away with with being a bit more humorous. But I think, uh, yeah, I think... It's it. Oh, on the yeah. same note, Sorry. I would like to say, uh, I've, I've uh, seen a couple of interesting uh, humorful punches in uh, gaming instructions sometime back. Uh, and uh, I really enjoy actually for tre treasure hunting and uh, it's interesting to read the instructions like when we're trying to learn a new game and uh, I think it's really <laughs> humorous beneficial in the gaming instructions and documentation of that. Yeah. I guess it depends on the product and the audience and uh, if you're writing for a product that directly affects someone's business revenue or whatever that's not really a place to use humor, but I don't know, Spotify, Slack, Tinder, whatever stuff you use for fun and, uh, you know, pastimes, that's definitely a place where you can use humor. And I think Chris has put on, you know, on the chat, I was just, I... I think the, uh, whether to use humor or not is really in line with the tone of voice, guys of a, a specific organization so i guess that's part of content strategy <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and I, I was thinking i was going to bring up but be, because um kath is going to be talking about uh being the only tech writer because i was going to talk a little bit about what i'm doing at izetl i think it, I'd, I'd rather let kat speak first and then i can probably ask or talk about my little bit with her after she's done her presentation because it's a similar similar sort of tale being uh, and i would genuinely like to have some feedback on what i did and and uh, why i did it mm -hmm. so if, if i can hand over to cat a little early is that okay with you cat uh yeah unless anyone else has any questions or no, there was one question in Slack, but you replied that in your first sentence saying you've never used humor in your there docs. You <laughs> yeah. yeah, I would follow up with why, but you kind of answered that as well. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm, I'm having thought about it more though. I, I genuinely have like have an urge to try. So watch, you know, look out for Afton Blood about mm. either till suddenly it ending thousands of people. 